how to remove sealer or paint with Seal Green SCR 1600. In this video, we were going to look at how to restore a floor that was damaged by humidity. The project restore the floor in its original condition and mitigate the humidity coming through the floor, creating the white stains as you can see through the floor. The requirements are to restore the floor, no damage to the wood moldings, and no damage to the custom painted walls, and no heavy smells for the homeowner. First, we did a test to make sure to ensure how well our product was going to perform over this results. The result was that it removed the sealer very well, the old sealer, but it did not touch the paint, which was really good news. Test also, we tested over the humidity affected areas, and there was a slight color discoloration there that we will have to address later on. The first thing we did is we needed to protect the walls um, because they are custom painted. We use frog tape yellow tape to underline the whole baseboard. And then on top of that, we use 3M pre-tape 24 inch uh, static plastic to cover the rest of the custom wall. We use yellow tape to hold it in place, so with the slightest amount of it to avoid any damage to it. The materials needed for this project were the Seal Green SCR 1600, our oil cleaner degreaser, the absorbent, and the Seal Green spatula. Here's a list of all the materials that you would need and tools that you need to cut the floor. As you can see in the background, we always put a tarp on the floor to set up the stage of working. And all our tools are organized correctly as we're going to need them. We also came in through the window to avoid access to the whole house. Everything was protected to as possible to avoid any damage to the existing floor. The next thing we did is we apply the Seal Green SCR 1600. As you can see, we use a one and a quarter inch nap roller and then we slowly apply it heavily. Heavily is the keyword here because if it dries, it will stop working. So we want to make sure that the coating is well, well covered with the material. As you can see, there's no need to trim anything. You just ro turn the roller around. Then we just went ahead and treat the whole floor. The material is slightly thick, so it's easy to control, but it also requires for you to be able to roll more effectively throughout the floor to get have nice coverage and no dry spots or empty spots. As you can see, as we cover the floor, it's covering uh, the efflorescence as well. Here's a picture of the floor totally coated. See how heavily it is coated. Now the only thing we do is we just leave it in place and we will return back in about 12 hours or the next day, make sure that the floor is ready to go. 12 hours afterwards, uh, we came back and you can see the floor. There are some areas where it's still wet, but there are some areas where it's actually dried out because it absorbs more into the concrete. Even though it worked really well there, we still need to regenerate those. So the first thing we do is we reapply a light application of the material all over the floor. We use what we call spike shoes. You, we also caution you that when you walk over the SCR 1600, the floor will be slippery, so walk very carefully over it. The spike shoes are for the purpose of not tracking stuff all over the place and allows us to walk over wet floors as needed, as you can see in the picture. So we will go ahead and apply the material. Uh, first to the wet areas, and then we do a light treatment to the whole floor. Sometimes it's easier to do the whole floor than just the spotted areas. Then again, we bring you to caution. Be careful as you walk on it because it is going to be slippery. It's a soy-based product, and it does leave a slippery surface uh, while it's still wet on the floor. Our next step is to start finishing the areas here. As you can see, you're getting everything nice and wet, just enough to get it uh, to re-energize again. And then we will continue to do our next step, which is actually uh, scraping the floor. Using the seal green scraper, we will start scraping from the door inward so that way we don't have to step on the wet material. And we do scrape it lightly. Usually just the weight of the scraper is good enough when you leave it 12 hours. The reason for the 12 hours is the product works by melting the sealer from the top down. So we want to make sure that it melts the whole sealer all the way through. If this floor didn't have a uh, permanent stain, then the color of the floor would have come off to us well. Now, for safety purposes, we use a seal green absorbent, which is designed to collect the material, dry the floor a little bit so it's safer to walk, and then we just uh, allows us to move easily through the process here. Now that he has spread the uh, seal green absorbent, 
he is basically is cleaning up the floor a little better so that way it will become less slippery it's still slightly slippery but not as bad as when it's wet as you can see he just moves it forward the absorber has a couple of purposes one to reduce the slipperiness of the floor and second is to uh, help you collect the liquidy uh, sealer that you will create after it has melted from the application of the seal green scr 1600 as you can see here we just spread the, the absorbent wherever we're going to be walking ahead of time and then we just push it forward to allow it to start collecting the material in front of it once you have collected uh, most of the material together we bring it up to a pile as best as we can and it's not necessary to remove all of it off the floor uh, the absorbent but it is important to remove all the sealer off the floor if there's any sealer left you would see little shiny spots left behind as you're scraping the floor usually just the weight of the spatula is all you really need to scrape the floor off the material off the floor as you can see here we're just trying to make everything become more solid so we can then just pick it up and dispose of it now that we have collected to a pile we add a little more to make it a little more solid and easier to collect. Typically, it's a five pound pail and a pound pail will do about 600 square feet of floor to absorb. Something that average depends on how liquidy the material becomes. In this case, we use a little less absorbent because the material is a little more jelly type. So it didn't require as much absorbance as necessary, but you can see how easy it is to pick it up and dispose of it. You will also notice that we had a trash can with a yellow liner. So you can see the application of how we dispose. The next step is to actually mix the oil cleaner degreaser that comes with the product. The purpose of this is that when you scrape off the material off the floor, it will leave oily film to the floor, which is definitely required to be washed away. If you don't do that, it will affect your next flooring part of the project or the next part of your flooring project. So as you can see, he put it there, he filled the bucket to about an inch or two off the top, and then he basically just dipped a string and mopped them. Perhaps you may want to dispose afterwards if you don't need it again. And then he just basically applies it to the floor. There is no need to do very heavy scrubbing or brushing, just enough to agitate it lightly. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. Just spread it out, move it around a little bit. And you can see here that we're using the brush method for smaller projects, as opposed to larger projects where you might want to use uh, heavier equipment, as you will see in the next part of the video. So once he scrubs it a little bit around, just to spread it out and get a little penetration into the concrete, he will now apply some fresh water. We use just a hose with a very light mist of water, just to get a little more liquidy and then we go ahead and use a shop vacuum one of the shop wet bags uh, to collect all the water from the floor the process will in the next part of the video will be repeated the same except that we are using a different machine that is more effective in scrubbing the floor as you can see here now we're using the machine the process repeats the same we take the mop apply it to the floor spread it nice and wet the more water you put on the floor uh, not to over flood it, but the more water you put on the floor, the easier is for the machine to scrub. You will also notice that the floor maintainer, which is the name of the machine that we're using, we equipped it with a white pad simply for the reason that we're dealing with a little more sensitive floor and we wanted to make sure that none of the color that's on the floor today will come off. So we were trying to protect that. So by using a white pad, basically it's just scrubbing the surface like the brush did. We add the water to make it a little more easier to absorb and collect with a vacuum. And you can see there that we keep it low to a Avoid getting those custom walls sprayed with any type of water or any material because we were not sure what would happen to them and we wanted to make sure we had a successful clean project at the end as you can see he's just running the vacuum picking it up and just going through the whole floor uh, quickly and that's what you really need to do to degrease the floor there's one more step process that we do and that is that we go around with a little hand scraper I want to make sure that any sealer that is around the edge because the machine will not be able to get that of the brush just do a light scrub around it and that will remove that we finish then scrubbing the rest of the floor we apply a little water just like we did in that section and then we just vacuum as you can see vacuum uh, is coming up nice and clean and collecting all the leftover of the S seal green SCR 1600 also degreasing the floor which is very very important to do because any other coatings may not stick then we do one final rinse we just apply water to it and use a shop back to collect it again and that is all we have to do for the preparation of the floor after that is done, we go ahead and then just let it dry at this period of time. This is what the floor looks like after we finish vacuuming. It's drying slowly. And you can see there's still some wet spots. One of the things that we did notice is that in the area where the effervescent was very heavy, three spot areas got affected and the color did come up. So we did touch them up using the seal green colors, light adobe and dark adobe in a 50-50 mix with water. 
For more information on that, you can visit our website on the colors to get this floor to look perfect, just the way it used to be before we started. Here's a sample of the floor, half, uh, half of it's already uh, with an epoxy sealer that we use. It's a vapor barrier to eliminate humidity, and here's a total floor finish with a three quotes. Before and the after, we restore the floor completely. For more information on Seal Green products, call 1-800-997-3873 or visit www.sealgreen.com.